Hi guys, today we're going to be talking about different organizational schemes about the periodic table. We're going to be going over some basic notes. I would recommend that you follow along on your own periodic table. Maybe you need even one, two, or three periodic tables today. And add any labels that I add for your learning benefit. We do generally talk about the periodic table periodically, but it's still good to have these notes. We're going to start with something fairly simple. Location of metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. The easiest place to start is actually with the metalloids. Let's scroll down a bit here for you. Remember, whenever I outline something, you should probably be outlining it too. Our metalloids are sort of tricky. They all revolve around this stair right here. We're going to start with boron. We go all the way down in a stair-like fashion to polonium and astatine, and then back up. If you want to look at it like this, we've got two diagonals. Diagonal straight down from boron and a diagonal straight down from germanium. The reason that we don't want to include aluminum is become, because aluminum, like you probably know, is a metal. So let's talk about the metals. The metals are going to be anything beneath the metalloid staircase. We're going to start over with lithium, go all the way around, Make sure that you do include aluminum. Make sure you also include all of these nice metals at the bottom of the table. And these are our metals. So blue is the metals. Green is the metalloids. You might notice that I also did not mark hydrogen. That's because hydrogen is not a metal. Hydrogen is a non-metal, right? It's a gas. So if we go over to the right side of the periodic table, everything above the staircase is a non-metal, and that includes hydrogen. So I'm just going to outline non-metals for you. Red is the non-metals. This is just one organizational scheme of the periodic table. There are many more. For example, the periodic table, at least this one, is color coordinated to talk about the states of matter at room temperature. At room temperature, which I'm going to abbreviate as RT, At room temperature, all of these solids are in black. You know, you'll notice that's most of the metals, some metalloids, and even some non-metals. The majority of elements on the periodic table are solid at room temperature. We also have a couple of liquid elements at room temperature. You'll find one in the metals, that's mercury, and you'll find the other in the non-metals, bromine. There are two liquid elements at room temperature, mercury and bromine. All that's left now is gases. So if you look at my periodic table here, you notice I've got black, that's the solids. Blue, that's the liquids. So what's left? The gases are in red. All of the gases are non-metals. Don't forget about hydrogen over here, which is also a gas. Now, if your periodic table is getting a little bit messy like mine is, I'm going to go ahead and go grab another periodic table. On this periodic table, I'm going to start by labeling my sublevels. You guys all should be familiar with our sublevels. We've got the S sublevel, 
we've got the P sublevel, the D sublevel, and down here is the F sublevel. The next organizational scheme that I'm going to go into is periods versus groups. Periods are the horizontal rows on the periodic table. Periods are the horizontal rows. And if I count those off, we know that we've got seven periods on the periodic table. Groups you might have guessed are the vertical columns. If we number our vertical columns, we just go from left to right. We've got one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. You notice the numbers are usually listed at the top. So you can use those numbers as well as the numbers that I wrote. My next organizational scheme is going to take up the entire periodic table. So once again, I'm going to get a new periodic table. If all of your stuff has fit on one periodic table, perfect. Although I would recommend getting a new periodic table for this section. What we're going to talk about next is the group names. Remember that the groups are the vertical columns on the periodic table. I'm going to start on the far left. I'm going to outline my alkali metals. You'll notice that when I boxed the alkali metals, I did not include hydrogen. Like we just talked about a couple of minutes ago, hydrogen is not a metal. If hydrogen is not a metal, it cannot be included in the alkali metal group. That's why hydrogen is sort of in its own family. Now when I say the word family, that's just another word for group. So if you ever hear the term group number or family name, those are both referring to the vertical columns on the periodic table. The hydrogen's over here, it's sort of just in its own group. We can just ignore hydrogen for the remainder of this process. The second group, group two, that I want to draw your attention to, I'm going to outline here in orange. These are the alkaline earth metals. Next, I'm actually going to jump over to the far right side of the periodic table. I'm going to outline group 18. You might already know this, group 18 is known as the noble gases. Group 17, I'm gonna write it down here, is known as the halogens. I'm gonna sort of just do this next box all together. Groups 13 through 16 don't necessarily have special names, but you can call them by the their heads of the family. So boron, carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen, those are considered the heads of these groups, of groups 13 through 16. So group 13, we're going to call them the boron family. 
Group 14, we're going to call the carbon family. Group 15, we're going to call the nitrogen family. And you might have guessed it, group 16 is going to be the oxygen family. What's left on our main periodic table here is this huge section in the middle, which I'm going to outline in yellow. These are the transition metals. I'm not quite done yet. We cannot forget about the bottom of the table. Down here, we've got the lanthanides and the actinides. The first row is, are the lanthanides, second row are the actinides. These are known as the inner transition metals. You might ask why they're called the inner transition metals. Well, that's because they come from inside that transition metal area. Another name for these inner transition metals is the rare earth metals. And if we look back at our lovely periodic table, you may or may not have guessed I did a pretty rainbow for you. So this is our good friend, the periodic table. You'll learn to love him as I love him. And you should have all of the labels that I have made on the last couple slides. If you need to go back and review any slides, that's super easy. This is a video. You can just rewind. But this right here is everything that you are expected to know for the test. But you should not just be able to name the family names for each group. You should be able to give me some common properties of the four big groups. Those four big groups are the alkali metals, the alkaline earth metals, the halogens, and the noble gases. Please make sure that when you're reviewing your periodic table, you do refer to some other literature about these common properties. And that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video about the periodic table. Good luck studying for the rest of your unit.